I am Mindy Wheeler, the State of Utah and Utah State University Rare Plant Conservation Coordinator. All right, I will try to hustle through this as well. Um, as I said, I'm the State USU Rare Plant Conservation Coordinator, but it is definitely a, a partnership um, with the folks below and especially uh, my team of Megan McCormick, Garrett Billings, Ben Gibbons, and Blake Wellard, when we can get them. Um, without them, I could not do a fraction of, of what we're doing. Um, we do work with the Natural Heritage Program, um, but it's certainly not all we do. So I always am a little uh, confused as to what, are, what we call ourselves. So we're, we're trying to come up with uh, a uh, very creative name, I guess. So one of the things I wanted to mention, and I really wish I could hear the collective uh, response when I say this, but we are now um, part, we have been subsumed into Division of Wildlife Resources. We used to be in the uh, Department of Natural Resources. We're now with DWR. Um, I know that uh, the history is not good there, but uh, hopefully history will not repeat itself. Um, Hope, I'm hoping that uh, we can uh, work together. So, um, so I couldn't uh, get a sort of organizational chart for DWR in general. It's it's quite the machine I'm learning, um, but we are part of the habitat section, and so um, you can see here we're myself and Amanda, who's the rare insect conservation coordinator, also a USU employee are under uh, Paul Thompson as a, an assistant habitat chief. Um, you'll also note, note here that the natural heritage coordinator is currently vacant. I'm not quite sure where that's headed right now. Uh, Gary Ogborn, who was in that position, retired a bit ago. Um, what does it mean? Well, we are hoping, and it's looking positive, but I can't say for sure yet, but um, that plants will be included as part of the Utah Wildlife Action Plan, which is kind of a big deal in terms of, you know, it is a wildlife action plan, but to include plants can really open up the doors in terms of partnerships, potential funding. Um, so it's really quite uh, exciting that, that the DWR is um, considering doing this. Um, so hopefully we'll be sending that up the chain uh, by April 15th, goes to DWR and then to Fish and Wildlife Service as a minor revision. Uh, I can answer questions about that too in the chat. Um, so these are the things I'm going to try to go into. Um, first of all, updating nature serve ranks. Again, I, I know I talked about this last year. We talked about this last year. I looked at my presentation, but um, it really is sort of one of the big cornerstones of what we do. Uh, it really um, create some really good partnerships with our federal partners because the BLM, the Forest Service, and the Fish and Wildlife Service really look at these um, ranks to sort of decide where the priorities need to be. Um, so, and then it also feeds into our um, survey and monitoring needs as well. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of this just because I think I touched on this last year, but um, BLM is revisiting their sensitive species list this next year. So uh, these updated ranks will be um, helpful for that. And then the Manti LaSalle is working on their forest plan and they uh, would like some information. We're gonna be working with the Manti LaSalle to get them information on uh, the species on their uh, let's see, species of conservation concern list. Um, and again, sorry to those who, you, who are very familiar with this, um, uh, ranking process, but there's probably a few or a number that aren't very familiar with it. One of the one of the other things is is that um, biotics NatureServe has sort of intertwined this uh, NatureServe calculator, which makes things repeatable um, and transparent in terms of what the rankings ending end up being. Um, it, it is now part of the biotics um, uh, database, so. Uh, that information does go directly to um, NatureServe. But we, we have noticed that there is a little bit of a lag between when we update our state ranks and when they appear on um, 
on uh, um, Nature Serve Explore. So I would um, encourage people to go to this um, fieldguide.wildlife.utah.gov. I tried to say something about you know Utah species with a bunch of fur in the back, but you know, so it goes. Um, so, so you can. There we go. Uh, just um, search on which areognomes we have up and ready to go. Um, let's see, let's go to Lagenum, which is, this is anyway, this is becoming a, a bit of a, um, a taxonomy uh, issue. Anyway, it has pictures, information, it has these um, uh, distribution maps, et cetera. And, and most importantly, um, it will have the most up-to-date ranks. So um, that's, that's where I wanted to, or why I wanted to take you here. Um, thankfully, Garrett has been doing a lot of work on this. Um, so it's a, it's a great resource for those ranks. Um, I guess just a little bit more about updating ranks. We do use herbarium collections as well in terms of when they're appropriate to include. If, we, if they're recent and also certainly the name of the collector uh, carries a lot of weight. Uh, we overlay, you know, any GIS layers to sort of feed into the um, into the threats categories. And one of the bigger things that we um, have is we have a number of great botanists at our fingertips or at the other end of email, however you want to put it, um, in terms of uh, input, in terms of uh, you know their experiences with these species that we're ranking. These are people like. Um, um, uh, Cheryl Goodrich, Leela Schultz has weighed in on a couple. Walt Fertig, of course, has been a great um, resource for Utah flora. Robert Johnson um, has agreed, the BYU collections manager. Dustin Rooks helps us. Anyway, it just it really helps us get um, the, the most amount of data and information as possible to make these, um, these rankings uh, accurate. And then how how these sort of steer us in the field to so these two that these are pointing to, they were positive points, but they, to us, they looked a little bit outside of the, the known distribution. They looked a little bit weird. Um, and they also, if we included that, it might change the distribution scoring in, in, uh, in the nature serve calculator. So we ended up, um, contacting a private landowner and he spent six hours with us looking for this point. And I think it's just one of those that it was, um, you know, the, it was uh, misprojected from the herbarium or, or something of that nature. Same with this one here for, this was Anserinus and this was Hamiltonia. So we, we went after both of these. And of course that takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, field work, of course, big um, aspect of what we do. We added 2,000 new points in 2020, the crew uh, did, crew myself. Um, and then if we included uh, our partners, which are volunteers, as well as um, we have given our collector app to BLM offices, et cetera, and they, um, they use it as well, which is great in terms of working with the data on the back end. It doesn't, it's all in one um, uh, format, which is huge in terms of getting into the database. So field work quickly, we started out doing the Cisco milk vetch, which is Astragalus sabulosus sabulosus, as well as vehiculus. Um, and we did do Isleyi as well. So that's one, that's two, that's I think, that's one of my photographs. And I think uh, anyway, I'm not a good photographer, I'm working on it. Uh, then we went, it came down here for Cyclodenia territory. This crazy, crazy population, 120 plants. Kudos to Brian Elliott for finding this. I mean, even with a drone, if a drone found it, I would suspect you'd have to send people up to see if it was real because it was just, it was crazy. Anyway, and you can see the steep slopes uh, behind you. So you can see this is my cyclodinia scramble, all four points of contact needed to get down because what we thought, well, that's an easier way down. This is what happens when you follow Blake in the field. It's fun though, it's a lot of fun. Uh, then we went up to Stragulus Sansorinus in the uh, Raft River territory. 
This is, of course, Astragalus anserinus, which is a conservation agreement species. It's wonderful when it's like this, when you're trying to do demography plots, et cetera. Uh, but more, than, more often than not, you're looking for something like that, uh, the seedlings there, which anyway. And then this is uh, the Raft River Territory looking for Potentilla cotamii, which uh, Potentillas are notoriously difficult. Then we went to the Weber River Territory. This is where we were looking for Blake's new plant and mapping Blake's new plant, Stephanarmeria occultata, which is hidden wire lettuce. I mean, you look at that, you think, oh, it looks like a whole bunch of uh, Artemisia ludovisiana, but no, indeed, it is not. Um, so we did, again, we were very lucky in getting um, some access to private property. Uh, people were very um, kind and let us spend a half a day on it, which was really quite helpful. Um, and then we went to the Indian Creek area to do some work on Angelica Wheeleri. Um, the DWR wanted to put in some beaver dam analogs in there. Then of course, and we'll hear a lot about this area today, um, up in the Logan Peak area. Um, I, anyway, we'll hear a lot about that today. Um, looking for the Mucinia naomiensis, Viola frank smithii, Penstemon compactus. Um, this is the Orthocarpus holmgreniorum. Um, the Primula maguire eye, of course, this is the Bill Gray photo. Um, and then we went down to uh, the LaSalle's and this was in September. And this is what we found. We spent maybe three or the crew, the team spent maybe three days down there and you know things would just disintegrate in their hands. And so I uh, came back early, it was just not, not worth it. So let's all hope for a, a wet spring, for goodness sake. Um, and then we did some uh, Spranthes work in Diamond Fork. Um, looking for this lovely uh, plant. Uh, we also uh, did some work up in the, the Summit County population that um, Rita mentioned. Yeah, this um, arrow doesn't point anywhere because we, uh, we were monitoring uh, the Stragulus montii um, up at on the Wasatch Plateau. We've been doing that um, every year since 2017, doing uh, these transects as well as um, some following the uh, methods that were first laid out by Jewel Tui in 1989, we were able to find his plots. Pretty amazing. Um, this is just, you know, quickly we're doing some demography stuff for Astragalus anserinus, as well as, you know, trying to get some counts in a larger, uh, in a larger area, 80 um, 10th acre plots across the entire distribution. Stragulus montii, again, we're doing these uh, three by three foot plots. Um, yeah, that's, it's, that's the plant in the foreground there. Again, I can answer questions about that. QAQC and ingestion of, of new data. Um, always, thanks to Ben, uh, we appended over 24,000 records uh, this year. Most of these were the large uh, cactus data sets, which needed, which were, well, a number of them were in uh, a number of different um, uh, formats, which took a lot of time to get them e in our database in the most accurate manner possible. Um, we also enter in the associated species with each uh, target plant. So, but those also end up as observations in our database. We also, are generating uh, element occurrences. Um, there's anyway, it's it's a nature sure thing, and there's there's a lot of folks out there that um, still speak in the EOs, which is fine. So we have a little script that we can run to uh, generate that that for their needs as well. Uh, writing grants and proposals. Uh, I would, I guess, I don't know. I would be remiss if if I didn't mention this. It just it does take a fair amount of time because everybody on my team is uh, funded by grants, except for myself. So it just takes a while. The other thing I wanted to mention, how am I doing on time, Dave? Oh, 1442, oh, there you okay. go, hey. Um, so I just wanted to mention that the Endangered Species Mitigation Fund um, funded about 
it's probably closer to $186,000 for plants and pollinators last year. So um, conservation agreement support, uh, hope Hornbeck is really uh, indispensable in that regard because uh, there's been a lot of turnover in the different agencies uh, and she really has the most institutional knowledge and does a great job for our, um, our uh, annual report every year. Um, uh, Susan Meyer doing some work on the clay phacelia, also doing some work on the um, Shibwitz milk vetch. So uh, this gets into um, the pollinator work that Jenna was mentioning. We do have a survey, one, two, three, trying to get uh, citizens to go out there and uh, mark the point at which they saw either milkweed or any um, life stage of the monarch butterfly, as well as we are now including bumblebees as well because of, of what's on the Fish and Wildlife Services uh, work plan. So we also, so one of the, potentially one of the largest issues of the Western monarch anyway, people are starting to believe that uh, there's just a kind of a dearth of late season nectar to help fuel up the monarchs to get them back to California or uh, Arizona and Mexico as the case might be. So we spent uh, some time collecting some seed from these late season uh, nectar sources, which, uh, and now they're at various growers um, to, to use. And uh, anyway, we're, we're working with the prison, we're working with uh, a couple other growers to, to see if we can get some of those ready to put back out on the, <laughs> sorry, I'm just um, looking at this next one. Get, putting it back out on the landscape. Then we Maguire's Primrose, the Forest Service, the Wasatch Cash. Uh, we granted them some money to uh, try drone monitoring for that one this year. Uh, rare plant prioritization, that's me and my team. The RANA technology training. Um, um, with COVID, that's been a bit of a um, uh, challenge, I guess, to say the least. Um, but I'm, I'm still hoping that that can happen because it is some wonder, wonderful technology and can be incredibly useful. Um, again, just a, a, another shout out to our partners, um, the Manti LaSalle National Forest. We uh, are partnering with them to do some work on their SCC taxa um, for the next few years. Um, BLM has been great in terms of, um, you know, getting together to talk about um, which rankings would be most useful for them as well as surveys and monitoring. Then, you know, sometimes we fill in the gaps or we do fill in the gaps with various other projects um, to, you know, essentially keep the, keep the money coming in. So the, the, U, the Reclamation Commission has been great in terms of working with us for those uh, Ute Ladies Trusses surveys down in, in Diamond Fork. And then we've been doing some stuff uh, with Washington County, as Jenna mentioned, and then the seed collection again for the late season nectar sources. Um, I think, I think that's it.